Hey guys, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and I'm here with Evan, one of our teardown engineers. Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> we took apart the iPad 5. So tell us, why do we call it the iPad 5, first of all? All right, so there's been, what, seven, eight, ten revisions of iPads, but this is the fifth iPad that they actually just called iPad. And on top of that, um, I think Apple's finally solidifying like their naming scheme. You have the iPad Pro and you have just the iPad. You have MacBooks, MacBook Pros, MacBook Airs. So I think it's finally coming into his own and it actually makes sense to me. Okay, so Evan, tell me a little bit about the teardown, the process, what we found, how did, how did it work out for you? Um, so basically throughout the teardown, it was just, play, we were playing spot the differences for the most part. You know, we opened it up, look at the cameras. Okay, it look like Air 2 parts. Look at the display, it kind of looks like an Air 1 part. We looked at the motherboard and pretty much even the layout of the motherboard itself looked very similar to that of an iPad Air 1. So it's an iPad, so what did it score? So it scored a two on our repairability scale and that's pretty average for an iPad. Um, we did find a lot of adhesive, you know, getting this display off is a real uphill battle. However, since the design is very similar to an iPad Air 1, um, thankfully we already have guides available. So I think the big story with this teardown is compatibility. Tell us a little bit about how you decide if a part is compatible. So basically I went down to our warehouse, picked out a bunch of iPad Air 1 and Air 2 parts and just started taking stuff out and seeing what fits. Um, a lot of the times the connectors would fit, but you'd have funky behavior, like the camera for the Air 1 was really red and the camera for the Air 2 would cause boot loops. Um, but generally it was pretty much a plug and play type process. We found out the headphones phone jack works, the front facing camera doesn't, the rear facing camera does. Well, most importantly, the digitizer is compatible and nice. um, that's most often broken and failing component in an iPad. Um, the LCDs were a bit of a funny story. Um, we swapped old LCDs into new iPads, new iPads, old LCDs, and discovered that the new LCD will work in an old iPad and it'll look great. But if you take an old one and put it in this one, it'll look kind of dim and only show up at 220 nits when we're expecting around 400. Okay, Evan, we got some questions from the interwebs from social. All right, let's, um, let's see, Mohammed is asking, do you think they separated the di uh, digitizer and LCD for ease of repairability or was it cheaper to produce? It seems like a backward move, he says. Yes, to both those questions. Um, this is like a middle of the road kind of iPad. You know, they're targeting um, enterprise customers and classrooms. Um, and this iPad is highly repairable and it's targeted at a lower price so that Apple can get back in that education market where they were previously floundering a little bit. Okay, Evan, we got one more question. Uh, he wants to know if we're going to be selling the screens. Um, yeah, eventually. Um, but for right now, you know, sourcing new parts is always a little bit difficult. The good news is that since this is an unfused display, the digitizer is much more likely to break than the LCD and we do have plenty of those in stock from the iPad Air 1. Awesome. So it looks like it was a pretty straightforward iPad teardown. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, you have to clarify that saying what's an iPad teardown because like most iPad teardowns, it started with a lot of heat and a lot of prying. Right. Um, but once the digitizer gets off, you know, it's pretty straightforward. We're seeing Phillips screws um, on the LCD at least. And then after that, it's more glue and an uphill battle. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming in. Yeah, totally. If you want to see the full teardown, you can check it out at ifixit.com.